All right, guys, here we have an interesting one for you. This is a 2008 Club Car DS Gas. This one here has a pretty significant issue that we have to get resolved today. Basically, it shut down on the customer when they were driving, and I experienced it when I went and picked it up. It, it drove onto the trailer fine, but then after driving it around, trying to get it off the trailer, actually, it spit and sputter, and... I was able to get it running with the choke. So that tells me there was some trash in the carburetor. So what I normally would do when there's an issue where the cart shuts down after driving for a little while, uh, this one did have some trash in the carburetor, so I didn't think anything of it, but just to ensure that there was no other issues, I will normally run these in no neutral, especially the club cars where you can put them into service mode and operate them in neutral without any risk of it jumping into gear. I would run it in neutral, pedal to the floor, full throttle basically, as if you're normally driving it. And I walked away from it for about, oh, I'm going to say 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, and then I came back to it. I walked back into the shop here and I noticed there was a stream of oil dripping onto my shop floor. So, you know, in a quick move, I shut the cart down, basically just turning the key switch off. And I let it sit for a couple of minutes and I checked the oil and this thing was filled to the max with oil. Um, I don't know if you can see that right now, but you can see the dipstick. It is, it was actually up to, I don't know if you can see those little dots there, but it was up to that point basically on the dipstick. So what happened you asked? Well, it blew the crankcase gasket. I'm not going to run the cart and show you what it was doing um, because I don't want to make another big mess. But down in here, it was actually blowing oil. You can see it all over this fuel line here. It was blowing oil out of the engine and it was just pouring all over everything. You can see how wet it is. Well, maybe not. But everything's covered in oil down there. So we got to pull the engine. So this will be a first, I think, for the channel of pulling a club car motor out of a cart, pulling the side case off and replacing a gasket. Uh, we're going to check the seals as well on this end. We're not going to do any bearings. Uh, this is just a simple crankcase gasket replacement. I've had these engines apart before. I've had the FE 350s apart before too. And they're very simple motors. They're very easy to take apart and put back together. There's not a whole lot to it. So instead of me yammering on here, let's, uh, let's get to work. This is why guys, I tell you, you cannot overfill these engines. And if you do, you are going to have serious problems. A simple carburetor cleaning turned into a major job now where we got to pull the engine out of the cart. This is going to take a little while to do. I am going to take this intake hose off completely. Um, that's only to give me better access in here. gasoline on me. It's all right. But after the carburetor cleaning, the engine ran beautifully. So that's a good thing. My head's going to get in the way. Sorry. There we go. Okay. That's the suction tube or the pump tube vacuum line, whatever you want to call it, for the pump. I don't know if that is... I had this out before. I wonder what the heck's going on here. Oh, you know what? The nut on the bottom of that's not coming off. careful <coughs> not to mess up the threads on that. Let's see, this is 
that nut right there was getting stuck. We don't need to take this off. So we'll just make sure it's on there good without stripping it out. We are going to take the muffler off. It just makes it that much easier. Coming up on the channel, we're going to have a whole bunch of... Uh, I gotta get in there with the thing. We're gonna have a bunch of easy go battery cage replacements. I don't know why this is giving me such a fit here. Let's see if we can. <laughs> see what I can't stand about this. magnetic places that stick that light. This muffler design is, you can't use a socket on it because, I mean, you can see right now, unless you have a very short socket and you put a wrench on it, or you're gonna round that over. So, we're gonna attempt. And it doesn't help that they're rusted, so it makes it that much worse. But yes, going through the trouble of getting the muffler off makes a big deal when trying to get these motors out. A little bit of penetrating oil does help, but it's the clearance issues getting in there with the, the socket. And then the only other thing we got to get off is going to be the stainless steel band clamp that's on the backside. And this is here to basically clamp the muffler. Wow, this thing is really terrible. Look at it, I can grab it and it doesn't rotate. Well, that's, that's not good. I'll be sending them an email and referring them to this video. You know, especially when you need the damn thing to be efficient. That's the whole reason I got an electric ratchet. So I don't have to be farting around with trying to get into tight spaces. Let's see if we can see what's going on in there now. I know I, you guys can't see exactly what I'm doing here, but. I am trying to get this breeze clamp to open a little bit. There we go. I'll show you this in a minute here. It's a big four four inch uh, stainless steel hose clamp that clamps the muffler down to uh, part of the frame. Let's see here, one of these big hose clamps. All right, so that is the exhaust freed up, so it should technically pop off now. Okay, I also have to catch the lock washers that don't do any good since they're heated up carefully. Okay, so you can see taking the muffler off is not hard. So now we have all this room here. I'm not going to disconnect the starter generator from the electrical. I'm just gonna disconnect it from the cart completely. Uh, basically take out the half inch retaining nut and bolt that holds it on the slider and take out the two 916 bolts that are there. Get that to the point where it's loose. OK, 
Come on. What are you doing? Okay. This is not a hard job by any means. It's just a time consuming job because it takes so long to get everything apart. And it takes a plethora of tools to get one thing off here. starter generator belt off. It may get a new, new starter generator belt while we're in here because that one does feel a little thin to me. All right, so that is starter generator disconnected. Oh, looks like we got a couple of zip ties in places they don't belong hanging us up here, which is fine. I'm going to disconnect the ground on that anyway. That'll be the only one we really need to disconnect. I'll pull the ground strap off, put the washer and nut back on. Um, Okay, so there we go. Starter generator is physically disconnected from the motor. We have to take off this motor ground strap here. Got to make sure you hook this back up when you put this back together. I've missed that once or twice and it's, <laughs> it's caused a whole bunch of issues because the motor didn't have a really solid ground. We gotta get the drive belt off. Are we in neutral? Yeah. Oh, let's put the starter generator belt on the pulley so we can rotate this without. Well, this is going to be a, a bear and a half. I can see it now. So, for whatever reason, I don't understand why these club cars have such tight tolerances on the starter or the uh, drive belt, but they they really do. You gotta really get in there and pry them off there without hurting yourself. Screwdriver usually works. I know there's a lot of stuff, guys, that you're missing here that I can't really show you. Uh, like I said, this is, we might replace both belts. They're not that expensive. Um, okay, so now we just gotta get this. There's the oil sending unit wire. Unplug it. <coughs> Here is ignition kill, we'll just connect it. And now we'll take this cover off. Is that 5 sixteenths? Take this cover off to reveal our control box component. We're gonna remove our throttle cable, 10 millimeter or 3 eighths, I can't remember, 10 millimeter. So what we're going to do is basically loosen up these adjuster nuts, at least one of them, all the way back. We'll slide it out and we'll pull that out of there. Actually, it doesn't want to come out with that washer on the end, so... Let's see if we can remove it. I don't know if we're going to be able to. Nope, we're not going to be able to. Okay, no big deal. No big deal. What I'll do is I'll take off these. I don't know if you can see them, but there's nuts here that hold these cable stays. We'll take those off. If you really want to fight with this thing and try to get it out that way, you can, but 
it's just easier to do it this way. I can't remember now if these are half inch or 12. These are 12. Okay, we got to get a wrench on that one because we can't get the socket in there. The clutch is in the way. Yeah, 12 mil. Okay. And these are not the case bolts. What the hell's going on here? Oh, look at this. This 12 millimeter here is the 10, or the, I don't even know what it is. I, honestly, I can't remember. Let's see if this one's gonna come off with any trouble. Yeah, look at that. Wow, those case bolts were not tight at all because they're spinning now with that. So we gotta, we have to fight with this now to get this to stay put. These uh, cable clamps here, we gotta hold them. There we go. So I wonder if somebody was in this engine once before. It is very possible. Might have to take the clutch off. Well, no, we can do because smush them, make them wider than what they're supposed to be so we can fit that washer through so we can get this cable off. This way we don't have to be dicking with this stuff on the in the cart. We can do it on the bench because it's just the uh, throttle cable, accelerator cable. So that cable, it, it's easier to take it off of this instead of trying to get it off the rear end. So we'll push it over that way. This cable here now will come out. This is the throttle cable from the governor to the, this thing, carburetor. All right, so physically and electrically, the golf cart is now isolated from, I'm just looking here while I'm saying this stuff, is now disconnected from the cart, electrically and mechanically, control-wise. Um, mechanically, we now have to separate the, we have to separate the engine from the rear diff plate and the lower subframe in order to get the engine removed. And that's just a matter of taking out six bolts, which that goes quick. This was the hardest part, was getting all this nonsense off. So now I'll get underneath the cart and we'll get all these removed. One thing I should mention is it wouldn't be a bad idea to disconnect the negative battery terminal. Though really, in all reality, the chances of anything starting without the key in the ignition and with this in normal mode and it's actually in service mode but you don't want to really have any potentials for short circuit so we just eliminate all that stuff all right let's get the underneath underneath the cart and get this thing pulled out all right hopefully you guys can see what i'm doing here all right so the oil is all over this thing okay that's a half inch on there these things have half inch and nine sixteenths there's a nine sixteenths on or is it half inch on top too? Let's see. I don't know actually. That is not a normal bolt. So usually these have two different sizes. I have a feeling that this was done once before because these bolts should really be much longer than that. I don't know, something don't seem right here. Best to wear safety glasses if you can. Because, especially if your cart is dirty, you're gonna have all kinds of crap landing on your face. covered in oil. Okay, now so up behind the rear, 
There is, there's two of these that you have to take off. There's six bolts, but two of them are only, only two of them are holding the motor, so you don't really need um, to go nuts. See, these nuts, oh, these are half inch. So, and we'll usually, once these break loose, Wow, why is this being so difficult? There we go. No washer because these are shouldered nuts on the back sides here. Okay, I gotta come on that side. Now the easiest way to get to the other side over there is to take the drive cl driven clutch off. Easiest way to get to the drive clutch, driven clutch rather, is to remove this back tire. I mean, this, you can do this without removing the driven clutch, but if you don't, it's just going to be that much more difficult to get to it. So you're better off just, instead of fighting it, just take it off. Hopefully it'll come off. Oh, there we go. Okay. A lot of times they just slip right off. Now, don't lose keyway. I'll just put that up there with the lug nuts. Okay. All right. So now that we got that off, right up in there, right dead smack center of the screen, there is a nut that you got to get off without rounding it off, of course. Let me see if I can get that on there. There we go. Oh, there we go. So this is the only one, the one of two on the rear end that you have to get off. There's one on the other side, same position in the middle. There's one on the bottom and there's one on the top. And then the one in the middle is the only one you have to remove. The top and bottom ones are the ones that hold the rear end to the subframe. Okay, all of that stuff is removed. So this motor is free. Let's get it lifted out of the cart. To get this motor out, I have to move the starter generator and what I'm going to do is basically just set it on the exhaust bracket because that's that'll stay in the cart there. that actually that's free okay everything's freed up so this will lift right out now it's not very heavy it's just big and bulky We got the engine here. Exhaust gasket looks good. Oil was spewing. Basically, I don't know if you, I can't really see where it was coming out at. The end, the oil was spewing basically out of in between here and it was kind of like gushing out all over the side of the, all over the side of the dipstick tube. Um, so what we got to do now is we've got to drain the oil out of it and then we'll get, let's get this clutch off first so we make this engine a little lighter. And this is a very simple task, but you need a tool to do it. So in order to do this job, you're going to need an impact gun of some sort to make it a little bit easier. You're going to need a 9 16 socket and you're going to need a 5 8 socket. Well, at least for this tool here, this is the clutch puller bolt. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to back out this 9 16 bolt here. Left-handed thread, by the way, on this. Just keep that in mind. And then we're gonna, and this is a regular thread, right-handed thread for the puller. 
We're going to use our 5 6 5 8 thing and gently just all you got to do is blip it. You don't want to like ram it down hard. There we go. When you hear the snap, you're good. You can use a little bit of oil or some lubricant, thread lubricant on there if you want. But you don't, like I said, you don't have to go reefing it down. <sighs> Looks like everything's pretty good in there. It's a tapered shaft, so you need, you gotta have a thread, uh, a clutch puller, because if you don't have a thread, uh, clutch puller, you're just gonna be creating issues. Wow, I smell a lot of burnt oil. Okay, so now you can see this is the side of the engine. Oh, also one thing I wanna point out too, do not lose these spacers. You need these to be on here because these space the engine out perfectly from the, the drive, the transaxle. I bet you this had a lot to do with that. This freaking bolt was loose. I bet you this is exactly where that gasket's blown. Let's get a drip pan. All right, so I got my oil drain pan here sitting up on a stool. And get the drain plug right over the pan so we can let it drain out. We're not gonna take the filter off yet. We're gonna hold off on that. I was gonna drain the oil out of this before I pulled it, but. Didn't really matter when. This engine is freaking dirty. I know you guys are not gonna be able to really see what I'm doing here. Okay, so now I'll pull the dipstick out, let it drain. We'll give it a little bit here to drain out. We'll come back when it's done. It's gonna take a while. Let's dip it forward, let it drain out a little more. Drain pan's a bit full here. I'm gonna get oil all over my bench. Just fine, whatever. I may take this outside before we pull it apart. I think I'm gonna take it outside and spray it down with super clean and kind of degrease it a bit so we can see it a little better what we're doing. I don't have my pressure washer here still, but I'll be able to hose it down. I think that's what we're gonna do. We are going, obviously, <laughs> doing an oil change on it. We'll change the filter later. We're not going to do that right now. We'll wait until we're absolutely ready for that. Okay, let me take this outside. That looks a little better. I mean, there's still a lot of chunky crap on here. But we're not going to go for a total engine scrubbing. No sense in doing that. We get to take this puppy apart. We're going to do speed round. Let me get this oil container out of the way here. So we're just going to crack them all loose. Oh, barely even tight. That was good and tight. That was good and tight. This is the nut that holds that on. And these are the only two that get those. Okay, now that we got all those out, let me double check. I'm pretty sure we got them all out. Yep. We also have to remove, there's, I have to crack that 10 millimeter bolt loose that's right there. And all it does is holds the uh, dipstick tube. This will just catch any mess here that's gonna happen. Now we're gonna just get our persuader. Now, as much as I don't wanna use this one, that's, that's what I'm gonna have to use. There we go. I don't know if you can hear that. Kind of like a hollow, -y, hollow sound. I'm actually gonna pull the dipstick tube out. I'm sure these wires are tucked out of the way so we don't knife them. There we go. Okay, case is starting to separate. You can hear how it's getting hollow sounding. There we go. And there's uh, pillars or posts that you gotta... There, now it's off the pillars and posts. Whatever you want to call them. Yeah, there it is. There's the busted... the blown gasket right there.
don't shillelagh it. Also, when removing these, these covers, they're shims on the side of the crankshaft. This is a big shim. Don't lose that shim. Like I said, we're not changing bearings, but here you go. This is where the... You know, this looks like this might have been a part once before in its life. Because this gasket, believe it or not, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell by looking at this here. But notice how, how the gasket rides in. See how it rides in right here? It's almost as if when somebody put this together, they did not put it together correctly. Because look, it's not, there's no gasket material here. Let's see, where does that go? That would be right on this bolt here. And there's no indication that the gasket material was sitting on that. So I bet you somebody had this motor apart once before. And in having it apart, when they put it back together, they didn't put it back together right. And got gasket material all over everything. Oh, well, let me rephrase that. They didn't put the motor back together right and didn't seat the gasket correctly. Let's see, we got to get that little chunk of gasket out. We're not pulling any of this stuff out. Um, there's no gasket material stuck to the motor, to the block all the way around here. Except for right here, around the bottom, and a little bit around the side here. So we'll be able to scrape this off by hand and then just clean up our surface a little bit with a piece of emery cloth just to clean it up. So if you're careful, you can scrape this stuff off with relative ease. Slowly sharp angle to the block so you don't score and gouge the metal and you don't have to get it all off uh, like if you get like right here there's a little bit of residue we'll get that off when we use a little bit of like a scour pad on it i'm gonna see if these will come out easily nope all right we'll leave them in i don't want to round them over All right, so basically this is what I'm gonna do for the next 15 or so minutes. See, it's like uh, electronics. Engine oil, motor oil is like the magic smoke that is inside electronic components. Once you let the magic smoke out, the component is dead. Same with engines. You let the engine oil out, you're basically killing, going to kill your engine. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. And we'll probably do two oil changes on this. I'll add oil to it just to kind of help clean out some contaminations that may get inside the motor. Um, What I typically do is, after I rebuild an engine or I have a motor apart like this for whatever reason, put this under there to hold it up, I'll leave the old oil filter installed. I'll fill it up with oil. I'll run it for five, six minutes or so, and then drain the oil and change the filter then. As just kind of like, I'd rather waste a quart and a half of oil to ensure that we get any little particulates out of it before putting on a new filter.
Well, my lav mic died, guys, so I have that on charge. But right now, I just want to show uh, one thing, a couple of things I want to point out. And my phone's going nuts. A couple of things I want to point out with this situation. This problem, it looks like it has been going on for quite some time. There's no way in hell that me running this in the shop, in neutral, on jack stands, is going to produce this much, this much gunk all over the outside of the engine. I mean, that has been running like that for so long that it's amazing that this engine hasn't seized yet. All right, so here I just want to show you. Let me take this shim off the crankshaft here. Here's the timing marks on this engine. There's a little dimple right here. Somebody has put a little bit of white paint on it. This is not normally here. See, that comes right off. That's the other thing that tells me that this engine has been taken apart once before, rebuilt, or whatever. Whatever the issue is. i just wipe that crap off. But there's the little dimple right there. There's a little stub here and an arrow on the camshaft. Okay, so you line those two up, and then you're at top dead center. You're at perfect timing. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me. I'm hoping that it doesn't sound too drowned out. So these gaskets are designed to go on one way and one way only. Let's see if we can get that up in there. We're going to slide it over that post and over that post. So as you can see, right here is where that gasket failed originally. So it looks like now this one's going to fit very well. And we shouldn't have to worry about anything with this one. This one should go together perfectly well. Gentle taps. Okay. Pillars have lined up. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll just get all of these. Never had a problem reusing these bolts. If you want to go and get new bolts, go for it. Okay, I'll get the torque specs and then we'll tighten these up at the torque wrench. All right, let's torque these puppies down. 23 foot pounds. Okay, there we go. 23 inch, or yeah, 23 inch pounds. 23 inch pounds is enough. 23 foot pounds is the torque setting on crankcase bolts. Show you where I'm pulling this information from. PDF file, the service manual. Crankcase cover. Tightening torque, FE290. So yeah, just in case you're wondering, the tighten those is 23 foot-pounds. Service manual, you can find it online, download it. I always keep it on my phone, just so I have a quick reference sheet. I know I don't re reference to it a lot when I make these videos. I just cut out all that crap so you're not sitting here listening to me not talk and looking through a sheet of paper. Okay, we're done. Let's get this thing back in the cart. See the subframe here, the engine pan. You can see how oily that is. That's what tells me that this has been like this for a long time because there's no way that this residue would be like this if this engine didn't have this problem pre-existing. So this is probably why the guy was going through so much oil. So let's get this wiped down, cleaned up real quick, and then we can drop the motor back in, get it back together. Just remember, guys, we're running off of camera audio because my lav mic is dead. I, like a silly human being, did not plug it in to charge last night. So uh, we're not going to go crazy nuts with this here. We just want to get this heavy wet oil off of here. Wow, look at that. I'm not going to be able to get all this off. This is going to take a act of Congress to get all this crap out of here. If you don't like metal sounds, mute your audio. I'm not going to be able to get all this out of here.
but it sure will be a lot nicer when we have to service it in the future. And we won't be dealing with all this mud. So you can see all that crap that I'm pulling out of here. Engine is going to leave in much better condition than when I got it. That's for sure. I'll wipe the bottom of this pan off once I get to that point. Not going to go too nuts here. Never going to see it anyway. Oh, I dropped the spacers off the thingy. You remember, you got to have those spacers on there. They are important. Because the they are what determine the spacing away from the transaxle. Looks a hell of a lot better now, doesn't it? We're going to reroute everything. There's a throttle cable, so that way I don't have to keep getting up and down off the floor. Here's our ground wire. The white and black wire is the ground, which kills the ignition when you take your foot off the pedal or turn the key off. Oil light is connected. Sending unit. Throttle cable back in. Everything putting this back together is exactly the same steps, just in reverse. Throttle's done. Hook our ground up. Accelerator to governor, I should say, is done. There is a difference. Okay. Engine ground is done. Fuel line to carburetor. Is done. That's the nice part about this. I can start work my way backwards from the front of the cart to the back of the cart. Use up all the loose bolts. We'll get all this stuff put back in. Carburetor anti-tamper cover is now installed. Oh crap, I forgot to put the stupid ass. I forgot to put the throttle cable back on. That'd be a problem. I go to start the cart and it won't start. I 
be like, what the hell? All right, now we can reinstall this. Happens to the best of us, guys. Happens to the best of us. Get the starter generator in place. There we go. Let's get our bolt. Get one bolt started here. Get the next bolt started. Okay. Washer. I mean lock nut. Lock nut. Okay, now we're going to put our carriage bolt in on our slide adjuster and get it started. And then we put our washer on. There we go. Okay, so it's just touching now. All right. I think we're going to put a new starter generator belt and drive belt on this because now that we're going through all this trouble, we'll do those last. I want to get the, I want to get it all tied in here first. I got to hook the ground up for the starter generator. The only reason I disconnected the ground was because it makes it easier to move it because the ground is strapped up underneath the frame rail right there. Careful with these, you don't want to rotate those studs because they're only held in with the single bolt. Starter generator's connected. I'm going to put the stainless steel strap on. Get it positioned in there. Okay, that's in place. And this bolt here, we'll tighten this one down last because we have to get the uh, stud, stud nuts on first. Exhaust is in place. Like I said, I'm not going to tighten that strap down until we bolt the motor in place and I get it where I want it. Let's just get it over the. There's a clamp that it sits on. We got to get that lined up. There we go. There is a lot of room for, you know, shifting this thing around. Take hose is connected. Okay. This way the starter generator crap side of it'll be done. Come on. Come on, little booger, get on there. Okay. Now I'm gonna be tightening these down, but I'm not going all the way. It's just enough.
Okay, it's just enough to keep the Oh, that's not what I want to do. I want to go the other way. It keeps the uh, starter generator from walking all over the place while we're trying to adjust our belt. And then we'll snug them up, not reef them down, but we'll snug them up nice and tight so they're good to go. All right, I can't find my pry bar that I would normally use for this, so I'm gonna have to use a wrench, a long, long wrench. And this is what you can use too. It doesn't take a lot to tighten that thing down. Now we gotta get the thing lined up. Okay. Now, jump back over to our 916 slash 14 millimeter stuff. And I'll snug up snug up these. See, one thing that's really nice about having an automatic ratchet for doing this kind of work is the ability to take up slack easily. There we go. Okay. All right. Starter generator belt is tight. Put the battery back up. We still cannot crank the engine over yet. No oil in it. Okay, battery's set up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go bottom side here and get this thing bolted back into the cart. Make sure everything's lined up. Tighten everything down. Driven clutch on. New drive belt. Throw the tire back on. I'll go through the oil routine thing and then ready to rock and roll folks all right guys this one is done everything's bolted in tight running the cart runs starts runs and really good too no issues we put new belts on it so they're good too um everything works like it's supposed to there's no leaks i did two oil changes like i said i would new oil filter and this one is done. So we're going to get this thing, put the seat back on it, get it off the ramps, and get it out of here. So, so all right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Hit the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a video to the channel. Be sure to check the video's description for links to products I use every single day. If you have any questions, leave a comment down in the comment section below. So, all right, guys, until next time, we'll see you in the next video.